What's up, guys? Well, Mike, Mike, over here. Uh, you've obviously fought in this arena before against another high-level lightweight. You've fought in the best lightweights in the world your whole career. But is there anything different in this lead-up to this fight with Dustin Poirier on Saturday? Uh, just another opportunity, honestly. Um, I feel like momentum has been building, even with ups and downs, even with a, little, a couple setbacks in my UFC run thus far. Everything has led to this. Um, once again, the biggest stage I could possibly ask for, UFC, Madison Square Garden, and Dustin Poirier, arguably, I think, the most decorated lightweight we have on the roster. Um, knock, him, you know, knock him off, get my hand raised, continue to stake my claim as the best lightweight in the world in progress. I be I've believed in for years that I'm the best lightweight in the world. I've had some ups and downs and some losses, um, but everybody does, and I believe knocking off Dustin Poirier puts me in line for the title. Given how the last two fights you had in this arena went, is there, do you feel like there's unfinished business in Madison Square Garden for you? I've, uh, I have taken an ambulance ride from Madison Square Garden twice. I have fought in Madison, Garden, Madison Square Garden twice. Um, you know, last one was just precautionary, obviously, because it was such a war. First one was an injury. Um, but that's the fight game. So, yes, I've, uh, I actually have thought about that. And uh, I plan on going out there and, and uh, actually being able to not spend five hours in an ER, sure. you know, here in New York City uh, on fight night. I want to get in, get out, kiss my wife, collect my paycheck, and then go uh, celebrate with some, some friends and fam. And you had, you had said after your last fight with Justin here, uh, the crowd was playing a lot into it, and you kind of maybe didn't focus solely on your coach. Did you have to do any different, like, mental preparation for this so that doesn't happen again against Dustin? I have, yeah. I've, I actually worked on visualizing um, the overwhelming nature of, of what Madison Square Garden is. I think uh, you walk into a lot of arenas, you walk – you know, you're fighting inside of the Octagon and other places. It's it's different here at Madison Square Garden. The 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 venue actually shakes. You know, it's literally shaking. Um, you know, it doesn't help that I'm usually in the most exciting fight of the night. Um, but I think, in a lot of people's eyes, this is the people's main event, and uh, everybody's looking forward to this fight. Everybody knows who Dustin Poirier is. They know who I am when it comes to what we bring to our performances, the intensity that we bring nonstop looking for a finish at all times, and that's must-see TV. It's on the, on the edge of your seat action, and I plan on being the victor. On the Embedded uh, series, his coach, uh, Mike, Matt Brown, said that um, or Mike Brown had said that he had top-tier boxing, probably the best boxing in MMA. How would you rate Dustin's boxing? Yeah, I would say it's definitely up there. I would say it's it probably is the best. Um, you know, when it comes to his angles, his footworks, his reaction time, his off his offbeat um, – his offbeat timing. He's uh, man. He just he's he's been doing it forever. He he grew up inside of the UFCs and fighting the UFC. What 28, 29 fights or something like that. Um, he's been fighting the best level competition since day one. Um, I believe we put together a game plan to be able to uh, get our hand raised, and I believe um, I believe I can match him strike for strike. I believe I've got more power. Um, I think I'm a more, more pressure fighter. So he's already said that he's going to be the matador. So he expects to he expects the pressure, and uh, you can expect the pressure. You can expect the speed. You can expect the power. I think it's just a little bit different when you actually get in there and, and have to negotiate and navigate the exchanges with a guy who has an indomitable will and is is I believe faster and, and more powerful than him. Then finally, uh, unrelated to your fight, Frank, this is probably Frank Edgar's last fight uh, in his MMA career. As a, he was a former champion of this division. Do you have any memories of Frank Edgar, a fan growing up? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, Frankie's a friend of mine. I've, I've gone out to Tom's River, New Jersey, and trained with him uh, for a couple weeks for a couple different fights. The way that he lived his life, um, the way that he fought, the way that he competed, uh, the, the, dude, the dude is a living legend. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, and uh, yeah, man, those, uh, as I came into the sport, obviously Frankie being a, a wrestler, a division one wrestler, me being a division one wrestler, he was one of those guys that I thought and said, okay, I'm gonna follow what that guy's doing, you know? Um, and his fights with Gray Maynard, all of his fights, every single time he's been counted out, um, he's somehow found a way to win in so many different ways. And he was a champion for such a long time. I think he was one of the best champions that we had. And uh, 
he will for, for sure um, be a Hall of Famer. And I'm, I'm actually extremely fortunate and feel extremely blessed to to be on this card. If this is his farewell, if this is his farewell fight. Mike, how would you describe your relationship with Dustin at the moment? Obviously, you had the interaction uh, cage side that one time, but then you had the split screen sort of interview, and it seemed that he chilled a little bit. How would you describe your relationship at the moment? I think it's fine. I think you, I think you're looking at two guys at the top of their game who are, who who live with the conviction that they want to be the best guy on the planet at 155. We're we're two guys climbing the same mountain, trying to get to the top, um, and uh, you know we've. Uh, I think the fact that our relationship started off so cordial. There was only one way for it to go, and that was down, you know. Um, he said some things, I said some things, and we both said, ah, maybe I don't like the guy as much as I thought I did. By the way, looks like we might be matched up in the next X amount of months or X amount of fights. So it's kind of just turned into a, a competition, and that's, that's what you want here. You want two guys at the top of their game, two guys that, that see only victory, and two guys that see a guy standing in their way. Dustin Poirier is in my way of what I want want for, for my, myself and my family and I'm standing in his way for what he wants and, and, and for himself and his family Dustin's a guy who wears his emotions on his sleeve right and I think probably by Saturday night he will get into a space where he doesn't you know love you as a person necessarily I'm curious for you just as a person what do you look at him is there something like that for you do you sort of think like I'm going to shut this guy up on a personal level no absolutely not I've, I've uh, you know I've, I've been very vocal talking about how I've made fights personal in the past and it, it just doesn't work out well for me I don't want to see Dustin Poirier in front of me I want to see a head which is a target I want to see two arms and two legs and I want to know that I have a job that needs to get done I know the scoring system I know how I need to fight I know I know what's the easiest path to victory and that's all I want to see I never want to see a soul a person a name it's just a body you know and I've been engaging in and hand-to-hand -hand combat since I was 14 years old and uh, I think I'm pretty good at it so I'll keep on keep on doing it and get my hand raised on Saturday night you mentioned how the garden can sort of press you into fighting a certain way but it's not just the garden you yourself are pretty much always in exciting fights so do you ever start feeling like an obligation I matched up with Poirier he has exciting fights I have exciting fights I have to go out there and fight in a certain way to provide what the fans are expecting or do you kind of just think well my skill set will take care of that itself yeah, no, I love the fans, and I love putting on great performances and great entertaining fights for the fans. But, you know, ultimately, ultimately, I just need to put myself in a position where I need to win, and no matter what, it's exciting. I've never in my entire career had a boring fight, win, lose, or draw. And I don't say that to, you know, gloat or impress anybody, but I just it's just my nature. That's how I wrestled. I wanted to get, as soon as that, that whistle blew, I wanted to get my hands on my opponent, wanted to put, put pressure on him, and I felt like I was doing something wrong if I was not pressing the action. Um, so I think that's a, it's a, it, it's a very, very good thing. It has put me in some bad positions here and there, but man, it's the fight game, you know, and now you're fighting the best guys in the world here in the UFC. And uh, at some point, when you know you've prepared, when you know you've done everything right, all you can do is go out there and just uh, kind of leave it up to chance. But I'm definitely a, a veteran now, f my fifth fight in the UFC. Um, things have calmed down a little bit. I'm seeing things more clearly as well. And uh, this is a phenomenal opportunity. I think this puts me in line for the title or or uh, another huge fight uh, by knocking off Dustin. Last one for me. Your prediction for the main event, if you don't mind. Prediction for the main event, I think, uh, man, there's so much intrigue surrounding this because Israel Adesanya has looked so so unbeatable in so many different ways, whether it be his strategy or whether it be his dominance, his, his technique and his skill. But then you look at a guy like Alex Pajeda who's – Seemingly, a lot of people would say have, have his number because he's down or he's up two and zero against him. But I think Izzy still gets the job done. I think this is a different sport than kickboxing. I do think Pajeda is has looked dominant thus far, and he is a phenomenal talent. Uh, great shot with a uh, a bow. Uh, <laughs> we we keep seeing that, uh, you know. So it's a. It's really. A, I, I think Izzy gets the job done. I do. I, I think Izzy Izzy knows how to win. I think Izzy is a phenomenally skilled fighter. Pajeda is a very dangerous fighter, but we've seen we've seen how that goes numerous times. Izzy, Michael Lapis. in the back. Uh, you just mentioned that a win could possibly set you up for a title shot. Uh, there's also talks of Alex Volkanovski moving up. Uh, what's your thoughts about him moving up? Um, I think if there's a guy out there who deserves to uh, to move up, I think it is Alex Volkanovski. Um, obviously, the selfish part of me says uh, I don't want that to happen. You know. 
Um, I understand how it makes a ton of sense from a promoter standpoint, from the UFC standpoint. You got the number one pound for pound guy in the world versus the number three pound for pound guy in the world. But I also think that Islam has proved himself to be our champion. He is our champion and we have to accept that. And I think he's a phenomenal talent. I also think he needs to have his first title defense against a lightweight. He needs to get through another lightweight before they start talking about super fights. Once again, I don't say that to uh, say that the UFC is making a bad decision or the wrong decision if they make that decision to, for, to let Volkanovski move, move up. Um, but I think when I handle business on Saturday night, I think it'll be undeniable that they're going to want to see good old-fashioned passionate American wrestling versus Dagestani Sambo, Dagestani gra grappling. That's what I hope, I hope we get to see. And speaking of that American wrestling, this is the last question for me. Uh, you talked about how good Poirier's boxing is, but when we break down the film, you have a huge gap in the wrestling department. Any chance we see that American wrestling a lot more on Saturday? There's always a chance. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to be able to, I want to be able to go in there and and move freely about the about the cage. Um, when that when the octagon door closes, I want to touch gloves and kind of just. Let it fly, honestly. I want to let it fly. I want to, I want to let it move. But, yeah, the, I think my wrestling is something we haven't seen a lot in the UFC. You see what happens when I do take a shot, pick Dust Justin Gaethje up, make him do a front flip, blast um, Tony Ferguson across the cage and hold him there. If you go back to my previous fights before I came into the UFC, when I take guys down, I can control them and I can dominate them, and they do not do not get up. Um, so the uh the openings may be there if they are you'll see dustin poirier get taken down if not you'll see a slugfest second row here last year at the msg you and justin threw down fight of the year do you think there's any chance this one goes the distance as well um yeah there's always a chance but um there's never a chance that me stepping into the into the octagon is not going to be fight of the night um fight of the night performance of the night i'm I got, I'm, I'm moving at a 75% clip here. I've had four fights in the UFC, three bonuses thus far. Um, and I plan on collecting a, not just my, my fight paycheck, but a bonus paycheck on, on Saturday night as well. And uh, there's a chance it goes the distance. Man, Dustin's got a great chin. I've proven against Gaethje that I've got a, a great chin as well. Some, some shots you see, some, sh some shots you don't see. When, when you don't see them coming, that's when you fall. Um, but when it comes down to me and Dustin Poirier, I think – Either way, you're in for a treat. Mike, just right here, um, you mentioned uh, the new champion, potential for a title shot with a win here. I'm sure Benil Dariush might have something to say about that. What would be your case on why maybe you deserve it more than him? Um, you know, I think uh, Benil Dariush is, uh, is on a win streak. Um, the one thing, too, I mean, strength of schedule, I think it's, it, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a guy who's, who's come into the UFC and my, I mean, my, my first five fights in the UFC have now been all top five opponents. Two and two, but two, my two losses are to the number two guy and what, the number – basically they were both number two and number three guys. Um, Benil Dariush is definitely deserving of a title shot, I think, with his, with his uh, streak that he's put on. Um, but I also think he and I going head-to-head -head for that title shot, um, I don't know, I – Obviously, selfishly, I think I deserve it more. So, but that's what that's what we all say. So we'll see. Michael, you, just on, just on the back of that, you obviously mentioned about the new champion Islam. How do you see yourself matching up with Islam Makhachev? Is, Islam is uh, Islam is who he said he was for sure. He is he is better than a lot of us thought he was. He's better than I gave him, gave him credit credit for. I stand corrected. I don't necessarily think I was speaking out of bounds by saying that we hadn't seen him fight a top five guy yet. Um, you know, he, he beat Bobby Green and then got a title shot after that. So it was like it left a little bit more to be desired to see him go through some guys. Um, I honestly think my wrestling will stop his, his, will stop his attacks. Um, I think I can take him down. I think I can match him grappling for grappling. And I think in the striking department, I got more power, I'm faster, uh, and I have better hands. That's me speaking confidently, obviously. Um, a ton of respect for him, but I do, think, I do think it's the most intriguing matchup in the lightweight division. There's not a better wrestler on, on the lightweight roster than me. Um, my credentials speak for themselves. Being a Division I All-American is, is kind of the epitome of, of, of wrestling accomplishment. So uh, I think I match up extremely well. I think I beat him, but that's what, we, that's what we all say. That's what Charles said. That's what I said about Charles. That's what. Um, so hopefully we see that fight early 2023.
And Are Mike, you in right in front of you. Um, looping back to, to Alexander Volkanovsky, there's always a question when a fighter moves up about scale and ability uh, and size at a, at a bigger weight class. For you, I guess, how do you think he'll fare at 155 pounds? I think, Vol I think Volkanovsky, of all the guys who would move up, you know, a lot of times it's a, lot of times it's a guy who's at a weight class and then they, they move up because they're in their natural weight and they decide to give up weight. You got to remember, Volkanovski was what, 210 when he was playing rugby? So he carried that power down. He carried that size down, even though his actual fighting weight is 145. Um, so I think he'll fare well. That's, uh, that's part of the reason why I look at that matchup and as a fan, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to see that matchup. I kind of want to see him come up. But me, selfishly, for my career, obviously, you know, I think. Uh, Number one, I think it just makes sense the normal course of action that Islam would defend the belt against a lightweight before we start talking about super fights. Once again, I'm not the promoter. Um, I came here to sign to sign contracts and say yes to every opportunity, and uh, we'll see how we'll see how how it uh, shakes out. I, th I think Volkanovski would do fit fine in that fight. Michael, back here. Uh, you you've called out Conor McGregor before this year. Do you believe that he's going to come back to the octagon at this point? I do, and I believe my his his first fight back will be me. It makes a ton of sense. I think I've I've made myself not just one of the most exciting guys in the in the UFC, but probably the most exciting guy uh, in the lightweight division. There's a ton of talk about it. I can't go a day without people tagging and posting and talking about me fighting Connor if he, if and when he does come back. And I do love the idea of fighting him at his biggest, at his baddest, and at his most dangerous at 170. Um, he looks big right now. I'd love to fight him at 170. I'd love to not make 155 for it. I think I think we would do staggering pay-per-view numbers, and I think uh, I think he knows that I'm I'm the type of opponent that he wants to come back and fight. Would you just stick around at 170 at that point? I mean, you beat Connor. They would probably be talking about a title up there as well. Um, I definitely have thrown around the idea. Um, making 155 is not easy for me, but I came into the UFC signed signed a contract saying that I was a lightweight. Um, 31 fights, hundreds of wrestling matches. Um, I've never once pulled out of a fight, and I've never once missed weight. And it's never even been a question because I'm a professional. Um, but um, I, there's, there's definitely some fights that I would love to take at 170. Um, but I don't think I'm a natural 170-pounder. More, more height than distance than anything. Are you at all disappointed that your fight isn't a five-rounder this this Saturday night? Absolutely not. I think, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for the UFC to, to put in three five-round fights on the, on the card, obviously. And then also, I would venture to say that even though, you know, the, the traditional wisdom of more is better doesn't always, doesn't always uh, stand true in every scenario, I would venture to say guys that can go out there, keep their foot on the gas pedal, for 15 minutes is a more exciting fight than guys that might need to pace themselves over 25 minutes. You, me and Dustin Poirier are nonstop action. Um, you're going to see a lot more exchanges, a lot more transitions, a lot more punches, a lot more action in a 15 minute in a 15 minute fight than you would a, a five round fight. And uh, that's what we're doing on Saturday night. Hey, Mike, uh, how do you uh, over here? How do you stay uh, disciplined under the magnitude of MSG, you know, the lights, the cameras, or, or is it just, like you said, you want to go in there and flow, so do you just trust in the work that you did in the fight camp, and, you know, once you're walking out, it's just a release, and you're just letting everything flow? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of both. Um, honestly, yeah, never to downplay Madison Square Garden, but you, but you try to... Uh, I fought now in a lot of different arenas, wrestled in a lot of different arenas before fighting, and... You know, you really just try to keep the main thing the main thing, whether you're walking out to an octagon in the middle of Madison Square Garden or you're walking out to an octagon anywhere around the world. You want to uh, just focus on your performance, focus on your composure, focus on your breath, your heart rate, your mindset, your mentality, and just remember how hard that you've worked. And hopefully that works out, uh, you know, for you to be able to put it, string together a great performance and stay in that flow state. Um, but also if I got to dig deep and turn into – Turn into the Michael Chandler that you guys saw a year ago here at Madison Square Garden. I think that guy breaks Dustin Poirier as well. So, you know, the, the Justin Gaethje fight, um, yes, it was ill-advised the way I fought, 
but I also knew the guy that I was fighting, and I was fighting, I was fighting the spirit of the man, not the physical body of the man. I was trying to get into his head and have him look across the octagon and say, holy cow, I have met my equal. I think Dustin Poirier has seen that fight. He's watched that fight. I'm sure he's seen some, some holes in my, uh, in, in my repertoire, if you will, um, but I'm going to be a different guy on Saturday night. Uh, how many backflips can we expect this time? At least five. No, I mean, it depends. Uh, it depends on how the fight goes. Uh, those backflips just kind of come out, and uh, the crowd wanted more, so I had to, get, had to keep on giving them more. I figured four in the last fight was, was good enough and better stop it there. Um, but we're going to be we're gonna be doing a couple backflips on Saturday night. Thank you. I'm right over here. Um, after your career now, professional career spanning 13 years, um, at this point in your career, after all the wars, all the tough fights you've been through, how do you maintain the level of motivation you've been able to do at, you know, this far into your career? I, you know, I'm, I was talking to Chris about this earlier. Um, I'm, I'm extremely, extremely fortunate because I, I actually have gotten two careers. I truly believe I've gotten two careers. I got the career where I can promise you that I worked harder than every single other guy who has sat up here in all these different events. I lived a championship lifestyle. I did every single thing right, and I can promise you that because I, I know that because I've trained on the West Coast, East Coast, around the world, been around these people. But I never got the credit for it because I was outside of this organization. Now I get a new lease on life, a second career, coming into the biggest organization in the world, and finally I get to put my, my heart and my hard work and my determination and discipline on the biggest stage possible. So... Truthfully, two years ago, whenever I signed with the UFC, um, I became a new man, and I, and I honestly had a new level of motivation. Um, adopting my second son adds a lot of motivation. I am now a father who has to, has to feed two young men now. Um, I got the love and support of an amazing wife. So this is just, man, I'm living the dream. I truly, truly am living the dream, and I can't, I can't put into words how amazing it is so it's easy for me I'm so grateful to have two capable arms and two capable legs to be able to sit here and you guys actually care what I'm talking about the people on, on the other ends of these cameras care what I'm talking about and this is a position that so many people would, would love to be in so for me to sacrifice that the, the gifts that I've been given is just downright blasphemy and it's, and it's just downright wrong so I wake up every single morning excited about what I get to do and I'm going to keep on doing it till the wheels fall off and I still got a lot of tread left on this tire you're going to see you're going to see it on Saturday night and I will be champion by the middle of next year that's what motivates me and that's what keeps me going